Hello, welcome to dadplays.net. Today we're presenting part 3 of our Minecraft Integrated Circuits tutorial. Uh, before I start I just want to say sorry for being offline for the last month. Uh, you know we had Christmas and New Year, too many parties, too many drunken evenings lost. And then in the New Year I've been uh, catching up with my, you know, my work uh, commitments. Um, I'm full of flu at the moment unfortunately and I've also been learning Java because I've been teaching myself how to do uh, Minecraft mods which is something we'll cover in the next part of the video but for now let's get on with the integrated circuits so if we just go into the world first and make a start if you remember from the last video we created this nice uh, circuit using uh, red power mods you know the bundled cables the nice colored cables and all the various components that are available now this design was 64 by 64 blocks which is quite a big area today we're going to see how to shrink that entire design down to a single block okay so let's just come in first thing we've got on the integrated circuits is a thing called the PCB layout CAD this is where we'll actually do our designing and with that we're going to use a circuit blueprint disk so we'll just highlight the disk in our inventory right click on the bottom of the PCB designer the disk is now inserted and if we right click on the design okay so the main areas here you've got the design area in the middle which is zoomable using the controls in and out you can also hold down the shift key and drag with your left mouse button to see different parts of the circuit. So you can just focus on whichever part of the circuit you're working on. Just move you know, just move the area around as you like. So let's just set the zoom on 50%. Now the circuit size right now is 64. You have different options. You can make it uh, 16 by 16, which only allows you to have a single input on each side, which is a bit useless. Uh, you can have 32 by 32 and you can have a 64 by 64 so that's one we'll use today now the types of input you've got on each side you can have a single input you can have an analog input that works it's single input line but you can have 16 different strength levels and you can have a bundle cable input which corresponds to the 16 colored wires in a bundle cable set that's one we'll be using today and on most of our circuit designs so if we just select B on all four sides We've now got four four sides corresponding to four sides of a block, which will allow us to have up the input outputs accordingly. Okay, so the top left we've got the various uh, command menus. Here you've got the comment menu, which allows you to create a comment on your layout. Just zoom that in so we can see it. So you can type a comment in there, like hello or whatever. You can just describe your circuit, whatever you want to do. You can put multiple comments on each uh, each layout. To be honest, I don't really bother with them, but uh, it's useful to have. You can also move a comment around if you want to position it somewhere else, or you can delete the comment completely, like that. Uh, your next tool is the selection tool. So if you click on that, once your selection tool is highlighted, you can select an area with your mouse. And then you've got your standard cut, copy, paste, and fill operations. Uh, your next uh, in, next menu is the simulation, which I've never really worked out what it does. It seems to have a pause, play, and step control, but as I say, I, I've never used it, and it doesn't seem to make any difference what you do with it, so we'll just ignore that. And then there's also a printer icon, which seems to be something the designer of the mod put in for future reference, but again, it's disabled, it doesn't do anything right now. Okay, on the top here you've got the name of the circuit, which is what you'll save onto the disk. So we'll just call this one test, for example. And then you hit the output button. And so now the circuit design is saved on the disk that we inserted. You can also import designs from a disk. So, you know, you can have lots of different disks. Each one has one design on it. And just uh, save, load them and save them, basically, uh, to and from the disk as, as you need to. Uh, you've got an undo and a redo button here, which allows you to step forward and backwards through your design. Uh, down the bottom you've got your erase tool and your edit tool, which we'll have a look at later. Okay, so what have we got in terms of controls? Well, the the gates and the components pretty much match the redstone uh, identically in terms of the input outputs. Uh, the only difference is internally to the circuit, you've only got three wire colours to work with. Now the green wire is, uh, it connects to everything, uh, but the red and the orange wires are independent, which means that you can lay them side by side without them interconnecting. They both connect to the green, but they won't connect to each other. So I just select the erase tool and you can just drag with that 
and erase as you need to so that's the wires you also got a torch which allows you to have a, a power input on the circuit board itself independent of the inputs you've got two sets of standard gates you've got your positive ones and or buffer and XOR and then your negative ones NAND, NOR, NOT and XNOR and then you've got all your components that comes from red power so a multiplexer, repeater, timer etc and then you've got your various latches which are equivalent to flip flops, toggle latch, RS latch and transparent latch so let's make a start on a, a simple circuit I'm just going to do a, uh, a full adder circuit today but it's uh, it's just a simple one but it demonstrates the power of the of the system so if we make a start uh, we'll use the top edge of the top edge of the design for the inputs and then we'll use the bottom edge down here for the outputs okay so let's make a start on our first circuit I'm just going to do a simple full adder circuit now which just has three inputs which I'll configure on the top edge of the design and a couple of outputs which are on the bottom edge now anyone who's done uh, any binary logic understands what a full adder is so I don't really need to explain it uh, you've got two inputs A and B and a carry in input and then on your outputs you can have the sum and carry out so let's make a start with the wires uh, just, I can just drag the wires across like this to where I need them I'll do the B input and do it like that and then we can use the null cell to, to skip the wires over each other to make them independent okay we'll put an AND gate here now here we use the edit tool when you left click it will rotate a component round for four possibilities east, north, south and west and then if you hold down the control key it goes into a mode where you can select the inputs outputs of a gate similar thing to redstone so there's our AND gate in place let's get an XOR gate and put it here Again, we'll rotate it round, oops, rotate it round, and then we'll configure the inputs and outputs. And then we'll just run these parts of the circuit on a little bit further. Okay. Right, now let's take the carry in input, which we can run. Uh, let's just run it to about there. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, that, that will be enough. And then again, we can skip over the other two wires. And we can run this down here. Actually, let me just extend this a little bit further. Okay, so we've got the uh, we'll need another XOR gate, which we'll put here. Again, we can rotate it, configure the inputs, and we'll take that one from there. And that is basically our sum completed. So we can bring that all the way down the bottom and run it to the first output okay just go back up the way right and then we also want to do the second and circuit so we'll drop another and gate there shut up dog rotate that configure the inputs come on there we go and then I need to take the that one then what I can do here is I can take this output use the red convert it to brown bring it across there and there so that's our two AND gates and finally we just want an OR gate for the sum we'll take that round disable the input we don't need and then I can run that down as well to the output side so this is just a very basic circuit and it's in no way tidy or you know the most optimal layout i'm just doing it here for speed rather than uh, rather than beauty okay so now we can test the circuit one important thing to note is the uh, the simulation is a little bit buggy and it doesn't always work in terms of highlighting the inputs getting the correct outputs uh, but you can check it just by seeing the wire colors changing so uh, if i just select a single one input on the A line you can see that the, the sum line is highlighted so that's going to work and the carry line is zero if I highlight two sum line is zero and carry line is one 
and if I highlight the carry in as well you can see both lines are highlighted so even though the, the visual things don't work the actual circuit does and it'll be good when we transfer it into a into a circuit itself so let's just disable all the inputs I'm going to hit the output and save that to disk and then we're done hit the escape key I'm going to right click to remove the disk Okay, so now the next thing we need is an assembler, because all we've got now is a de design on disk. We need to turn this into a circuit. So let's grab an assembler. We're also going to grab a raw circuit board. We'll grab a stack of silicon drops, because it uses a lot of that in the process. And we'll grab a couple of stacks of redstone, because he also uses those. Oh, let me just go back to integrated circuits. We also want four lasers for each assembler. So we'll put the assembler down and right click on it. You take the four lasers and put them over here. You put your raw circuit board there. You right click and put your redstone and your silicon drops in there. And then let me just take the disc, right click and insert it into there. You can actually see the name of the circuit on the front of a disc, it's called test. So if we go back in, now you've got controls here to, to make multiple runs all at once, but to be honest, you only ever need to make one circuit because once you place it down, it will stay in your inventory. And even if you uh, break the block, you just end up with multiple ones going back into your inventory. So you only ever need to run the circuit once. Un unless, of course, you made some bugs in the circuits, you need to adjust something and, uh, and re recreate it. So I'll just hit run. And you can see now it's processing. A processing time depends on how many components are, are internal to the circuit. This one's quite a fast one. Okay, so that's done. And when it's done, you should now see a printed circuit board called test. Then all we do with it is we need a crafting table. I don't know, I don't know why we included this step. It's bloody useless, actually. So we'll take a crafting table, drop that down right click on it you just drop your printed circuit board into the middle and now we've got a circuit with the same name and then how do we use this circuit okay so we need something else from the integrated circuit it's called a socket uh, let me just get rid of those and while i'm here i'm just going to grab bundle cable uh, i'm going to grab a couple of uh, colored lines for the output uh, what else do I need? Let me get a, a lamp and oh, let me just have a bus inputs panel as well. Okay, so let's put down our circuits. Now, as you place the circuit down onto the socket, you remember that the, it's got four sides, top, bottom, left and right. Most corresponds to the four sides in the design. So we have the input on the top. So let's just put down a bit of bundle cable and then bus input panel. And then on the output side, we can just put a bundle cable, and let's just uh, let's just do our two lamps. If you remember, the uh, the sum was on the wire zero, the white coloured one, and the carry was on the orange wire. And then let's just put some lamps on here. So there we go. If we test it now, on the bus input panel, our inputs were on the white, the orange, and pink. So this was A, B, and carry in. So if we select just the A, you can see the sum lights up. Select A and B, sum is zero, carry is one. And if we put the carry in as well, you can see sum is one, carry is one. So the circuit's working as expected. So what have we done there basically? What have we achieved? We've taken a circuit that's composed of some wires and about five gates, which if you did even in redstone, uh, red power components would probably uh, take up an area of about, I don't know, 10 by 10. And we've just compressed it into a single block. Now, as I said, when you break, even when you place this circuit, it always maintains a copy in your inventory as well. So you can just add extra, extra sockets and place down as many copies as you want. So there's never a reason to fabricate more than one anyway. Okay, so shall we have a look at a, a more complex circuit? This is one I prepared earlier, which is, if you remember, our 64 by 64 layout was quite a complex one. This was a uh, two digit seven segment uh, binary input and the corresponding output circuit. Let's just drop the disk in here. Click on 
input to load the circuit and I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see what's going on. So there we've replicated the identical circuit that takes up 64 by 64 blocks into a single block. You've got your eight inputs, you've got your crossovers, you've got your four digit binary to 16 decimal decoders and then down here you've got your 16 decimal decoders in seven segments decoders and then there's your output at the bottom. So, you know, this is this is a massive circuit that we can press down to a single block. So let's just go ahead and fabricate this one as well. Hang on, just let me remove the test disk from the assembler. Put this one in. And then, oh, I need a circuit board, don't I? Let me just grab a raw circuit board. Put that in and click on run. Now, as I said, depending on the complexity of the circuit, the processing can take longer. So I'll just fast forward this a little bit. 12 seconds later. Okay, we're done. So again, we'll take the printed circuit board, drop it into the crafting table, grab the circuit, and then what do I need? Okay, I'll just leave that over. I'll just work over here a little bit. Uh, let's just get a seven segment display. I've uh, got the bus input panel, yeah I think we're good to go. So again, we'll just drop the socket down, drop the circuit into the socket, uh, put a bit of bundle cable top and bottom. Now if you, again, if you remember the input was on the top, so that's where we'll put our bus input panel, and then on the bottom we'll do a seven segment display. Actually, let me just bring the bus input panel round to the front. So we can see it working in the same uh, same place. Makes it easier to see the inputs and the corresponding outputs. So basically what we've got here is we've got the eight inputs from zero through seven is an eight digit binary. And right now nothing's selected. So basically it's zero, zero. And you can see on the corresponding digit output is zero, zero. If I select a one here, you see a one digit appears. If I select that it's three, select that it's seven, select that it's F. This it this will do a full hexadecimal display. So your four four input lines are from the lowest significant digit, and then here, same thing again for the highest significant digit. So we've got a massive circuit that's so 64 by 64, and we've compressed it down to a single block, and it's doing quite a complex operation converting uh eight bit binary into a two two digits. Uh, hexadecimal display which is quite a useful thing for any any computer project or debugging that you want to do okay so that's it for this part of the tutorial I hope you enjoyed as usual you can find a link to the website for all the details uh, please drop a like comment and let me know what you thought of the video cheers and see you next time